Hello and welcome to another edition of Remy's Rave of the Day. I am your host, Remy, or better known as Remington Afri, youth minister at the Meadows Church of Christ right here in Beaumont in the great state of Texas. The word that we're going to rave about today is the word rabbi. Rabbi is the word that we're going to rave about today. When you do a search of that word, a New Testament search, the Gospel of John pops up. It records rabbi eight times. Eight times for the Gospel of John, John writes the word rabbi. So we do a deeper search as Bible students, and we do a count by chapter. And John chapter 1 and John chapter 3 would appear, would come up the most when it came to that word rabbi. John chapter 1 records it twice, and so does John chapter 3. So we have a two-way tie with that word rabbi. But we ask the question as we dive deeper, Which chapter, John chapter 1 or John chapter 3, which chapter writes the word rabbi in a short amount of verses? And the answer to that question would be John chapter 3. In just 36 verses, John writes twice the word rabbi as compared to John chapter 1 with 51 verses. So we focus our attention to John chapter 3 and we ask the question, what is John doing in his gospel that he has to write the word rabbi twice in just 36 verses? In John chapter 3, in verse 2, we see the word rabbi, and also in verse 26. If you look at John chapter 3, in verse 2, there's a certain individual that comes to Jesus. He comes by night. He's described as one of the Pharisees, a ruler of the Jews, and his name is Nicodemus. And in verse number 2, he calls him, labels him, identifies Jesus as rabbi. And he goes on to say that we know that you come from God as a teacher and you cannot do any of these signs unless God is with him. You have Nicodemus, a man of the Pharisees, a ruler of the Jews, identifying somebody else as a rabbi. Now that's interesting because if you stay in John chapter 3 and you go to verse number 10, Jesus identifies Nicodemus as a teacher of Israel. So you have a teacher of Israel, Nicodemus, calling another Jewish man a rabbi, calling Jesus a rabbi. But if we continue on in verse number two, what kind of a teacher is Nicodemus calling Jesus? Well, remember in John chapter three, verse two, He says, nobody can do these signs unless God is with him. So we can say that, number one, the way that John writes rabbi and the reason why he writes rabbi two times in just 36 verses is because he's trying to tell us that Jesus is the, emphasize the word the there, is the teacher of signs. And Nicodemus calls Jesus that. You are the teacher of signs. Now, What does that word signs mean? Well, I think there's a lot of different, I guess, opinions on this, but I think there's a difference between the word signs and miracles in the Gospel of John. Just the Gospel of John alone, I think there's a difference between the word signs and miracles. We define miracles as something that goes beyond the laws of nature, right? And that would be correct. But when it comes to the Gospel of John, I think John is doing something very special with the word signs. And here's how the word signs can be defined. It is a symbolic action designated to teach a spiritual lesson. A symbolic action designated to teach a spiritual lesson. And Jesus has already done some of the signs. If you go to John chapter 2, the incident at the wedding of Cana, when he turns water into wine, that was a miracle. But there's a sign in there. There's a spiritual lesson. He's taking something physical and he's applying it spiritually. He's going to take something physical and teach a spiritual lesson from that. He does that right there in John chapter 2, turning water into wine and still staying in John chapter 2. It's the idea of Jesus going to the temple, cleansing of the temple from John's perspective. And he says, Jesus says, destroy this temple and in three days I'm going to raise it up. And he's talking about his temple, his body. So he grabs something physical and he's teaching a spiritual lesson from that. The physical temple of Jerusalem to his temple, his body, referring to his resurrection. That is a sign. It's a symbolic action. 
And Jesus is doing right here in John chapter 3. He's doing it again with the new birth. That's the sign for John chapter 3 in verse 3 and in verse 5 where he says to Nicodemus, you must be born again of water and of spirit unless if you don't do that, you will not see or enter the kingdom of God. And remember, Nicodemus was confused by that idea of being born again because he asked Jesus, you know, how can a man enter his mother's womb again and be born again? And Jesus said, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. He goes like this. This is what Jesus is saying to Nicodemus. He says, Nicodemus, you know how people, in order for them to see and enter the world, they have to be physically born into this world. It's just like that spiritually. In order for people to see and enter the kingdom of God, they have to be spiritually reborn again. They have to be spiritually born again. And that's the sign in verse 3 and in verse number 5. And so going back to John chapter 3 in verse 2, Nicodemus calls Jesus rabbi. He is a teacher of the signs. He's unlike any other teacher. We've heard similar phraseologies when Jesus is described as a teacher who teaches, who has more authority than the scribes. Well, it's kind of like that same thought here. Nicodemus labels Jesus as you're the teacher of the signs. Nobody is doing these kinds of spiritual lessons. He's taking, he's doing some symbolic actions and, and making it into a spiritual lesson. That's Jesus. And it's creating belief. It's creating belief. It created belief with the disciples when he turned water into wine. It created belief amongst the people, and he's just getting started in the Gospel of John. So that's why John writes rabbi. That's why Nicodemus calls Jesus rabbi because he's telling him, along with everybody else who would read this Gospel, that Jesus is the teacher of the signs. But then in verse 26 of John chapter 3, you have that word rabbi again. Now here's the situation. You have one of John's disciples going to John the Baptist, and he says to John the Baptist, you have all these people going to this Jesus guy. People are being baptized by him. It's as if one of these disciples, disciples of of John, he's wondering, you know, why is that happening? How come nobody's coming to you anymore? How come nobody's coming to you for the baptizing and everything like that? And John simply responds and says, I told you this, that I'm not the Christ. I was that voice crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. That even goes back to John chapter one. He even said that he's even said this twice in John chapter one, that this Jesus guy who's coming after me, he has a higher rank than I. He, he, he's, he's in deserving of more honor than me. He, he deserves more, more praise than me. I am not. The Christ, it goes into the thought of when John the Baptist had to say several times that, you know, I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. That's what he's talking about here. But you have one of John's disciples calling John the Baptist, Baptist rabbi. And John is saying, I'm not the teacher anymore. I mean, yeah, in a, in a way I was a teacher. I was a teacher to y'all because again, I was preparing the way of Jesus for his coming. But now that he's here, he even said in John chapter 1, 29 and, and verse 36, that behold, the Lamb of God, he's going to take away this in the world, which John is saying, I'm not the Lamb of God then. He's the Lamb of God. You need to start following him. And that's when you have two of John's, John's disciples started to follow Jesus now. That's what is happening right here. John is saying, Hey, look, the, bri- the bridegroom is here, and we greatly rejoice about that. His joy is filled up. That's what John the Baptist says. And then that's when John the Baptist says, look, he, Jesus, must increase, and then I must decrease. It's time for me to go behind the scenes now because Jesus is front and center. Why? Because it goes back to John chapter 3, verse 2. As Nicodemus called him, he is the rabbi of the science. He is the teacher of these symbolic actions designated to teach a spiritual lesson. He is the teacher of the science. John the Immerser says, I'm no longer the teacher anymore. He's here. The teacher is here. And you need to start learning under his feet because he is the Lamb of God. He is the one that has a higher rank than I. He is the Christ. He is the Son of God. He is the teacher of the signs. And the sign for John chapter 3 is 
You must be born again of water and of the Spirit in order to enter and see the kingdom of God. Just like how people see and enter the world, they must be physically born. So must people who want to be spiritually born. They got to see and enter the kingdom of God. They got to go through that new birth. So that's why John in just 36 verses says, Rabbi, Rabbi, twice to tell us that Jesus is the teacher. He has all this, all these spiritual lessons and we come to him and we sit at his feet and we learn from the teacher. Nobody else has the answers to our questions. John says, not me, it's him now. He has to increase, I'm going to decrease. He's the teacher, Jesus is, that we need to go to when it comes to reminding and applying those spiritual lessons, especially in the Gospel of John. I can say so much more, but I don't want, I don't want this to turn into a sermon, but this is the rave of the day, the word rabbi. Twice in John chapter 3 and 36 verses, that's something cool, thought-provoking, exciting, something to rave about. Jesus is the teacher of the signs. John the immerser, John the Baptist says, I'm no longer the teacher. No, no more learning from me. Start learning from the teacher, Jesus, the rabbi during that time. And we do the exact same today. We don't go to any other teacher, but we go to Jesus first, the teacher of these spiritual lessons. I pray this is encouraging to you. I pray this is uplifting to you. Please consider liking and sharing this video as well as liking and sharing our page. The purpose is to edify your Bible study, edify your relationship with God, but also to show non-Christians, hey, the Bible's pretty cool. The Bible has all these beautiful connections and we want to show you that. There just needs to be somebody who needs to unlock these kinds of hidden gems. I say hidden because it's always been there, yes, but we just got to really open up our eyes and be able to read the text and make these connections because the Bible is so cool. It's so fascinating. And what we just read about today, the word rabbi. It is so cool what John is doing in his gospel with that word, especially in John chapter 3. So please consider liking and sharing this video as well as liking and sharing our page. I've been your host, Remy, or better known as Remington Afri, youth minister at the Metal Church of Christ right here in Beaumont in the great state of Texas. Please come see us. Please come visit us. Please come worship with us. We want you to. Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. And we have Bible class at 11 a.m. for all ages. And then we gather together that evening at 5 p.m. And then we meet in the middle of the week on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Again, we love to see you. You will be our honored guest. We want to love on you and care for you. So please come see us at 9195 Dishman Road. 9195 Dishman Road. Again, I've been your host, Remy, or better known as Remington Afri, youth minister at the Meadows Church of Christ right here in Beaumont in the great state of Texas. Tune in tomorrow around 3 p.m. And we'll rave about another word or phrase tomorrow again around 3 p.m. Y'all have a great day. Y'all have a blessed day. We'll see you again. Godspeed.